Thanks, guys. Jay Anderson here coming to you from the Foundation Room, and I'm here with Cal and Rob, and they are Time Flies. Guys, welcome. Thanks, Thanks for taking on. the time. Thank you. Thanks for having us here in the room. Foundation Room. Great room. <laughs> no worries, guys. So first of all, congrats on two more Boston sellouts. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I believe you guys got the, your start right down the road at Tufts. <laughs> Do you treat these as hometown shows? Yeah, we do. We were just talking about that. When you mentioned Boston schools, you say, you know, Time Flies Tuesday, we started out just down the road. It gives you chills. Like, you know, it happened right here. Thank you. It's Thank a you. Wrap. We are the ride. Incredible. Fired up, baby. Incredible. We're going to be on stage at Asher and Luda. We're just going to meet them in front of 4,000 people. It's amazing. Cool. And how about, uh, how about your guest list this evening? How's that looking? Look at Steve. Look <laughs> so at Steve. We got tour manager yes. right over there making faces at us. He hates us because it's a long list. <laughs> long list. Well, they're best friends you just didn't know you had. That's oh, right. Right. <laughs> come out of the woodworks. Yeah. So back to the Boston start. Um, take me back to the to your formative days, man. Let's 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 hear what what brought you guys to two more sellouts. Our formative days. Let's set the scene. Rob yeah. lived in a house down the street from me. Very, well, we met very dirty. Year, Imagine, you know, my clothes are everywhere. And, yeah, this yeah, is senior year. Clothes really... everywhere. We're messing around, recording. We've just put out All Night. This right. is in like, October of 2010. We just start putting out music to the blogs, and then we start messing around doing this thing called Time Flies Tuesday. Then we started realizing what was going on on a show from, on Drive from New York to Boston. No, from Boston to New York. New York yep. Time flies. Just drove down from Boston for a big show tomorrow night in New York City. Uh, treating the crowd like a studio right now. You gotta check out what we're working on. Join us. A real demo. 5% battery left. Stick on. Woo! Time to home. Been driving too long, dude. And then we just realized, you know, it's about start doing freestyles, covers. Two years later, we're still here. And not to, to lose my man card on this, but back to the Time Flies Tuesday, you guys actually covered uh, Under the Sea. Yes. How does that yes. jeopardize your man card? Yeah. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. I don't know who's watching this, but just in yeah. case. Huge Little Mermaid guy, but I thought that was kind of cool. That, sort now of... that jeopardizes. You know, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My mom got me a steel drum for graduation, actually, from college. Uh, and that was the only song that felt like I should play. There we were playing Under the Sea, and we said, <laughs> this sounds like it could be a great Time Flies Tuesday. Uh, probably our fastest one ever. Three hours later, we were done. Now we've slowed down a little. Uh, we're getting our groove back. But, but So we did those 68, and then we probably, since then, have done on and off another... 40. And when you think about it too, just as far as from when you guys first started to now, it's really been almost just a meteoric rise. It, you've really taken off just selling out show after show after show. And so fast forwarding a little bit to, to After Hours, it comes out in April, it goes right to the chop, top of the charts, iTunes number one, all that good stuff. Does, does that go right to your head? <laughs> On the one hand, it feels great. So let's not, you know, let's not joke around and say we weren't so pumped every time. Right. But honestly, every time I feel like we hit a, you know, a milestone or hit one of our goals, it's like, that was awesome. But what's the next goal? It's, yeah, it's motivation. So, yeah, it's, and there's always something to humble us. I remember when we released uh, the Scotch Tape and it got... Uh, into the top ten, which we didn't, we didn't even know we were going to see it right. on iTunes. Yeah. We were like on a train ride from Jersey to New York City, right. um, watching it pass, watch the throne. So we were like, <laughs> yeah. there's always, there's always, always Tony Bennett there to stop you. And to hate that guy. Yeah, no, <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> He's actually collabing on our next single. I'm just Is he really? <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing too, I, I, I read an interview, or, or um, I forget exactly who said it was one of your goals for this record was to to make an album where nobody hit the skip button. Exactly. Right. I thought that was kind of cool. And, and do you think you accomplished that? I think we did. No, I feel great about this album. I think we were really happy with it. This was an eye-opening experience for us. You know, we did everything independently on our own, and this time we were able to um, get our label partnered with a major label, so we were able to see kind of what goes on behind the scenes and all that stuff. So this album, we love it. It was great, great learning experience and all that. But the next, um, the new music we're working on is really, I think we've hit yeah. what we want to hit. And yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of collaborations on After Hours. Um, was first of all, was there any one of those? Was it T Pain or Katie Sky or whoever it might have been that just blew you away? 
and, and with your new stuff, do you kind of see yourself continuing down that, that I think road? there is nothing cooler than getting an acapella from T-Pain. <laughs> Having <laughs> T-Pain in your email, you know, is like, oh, wow. All, all those cool people, that Katie Sky, yeah, when we first heard her sing the chorus, was an absolute Over show an acoustic guitar with like a microphone, you know, it was the worst recording you've ever heard, and it was yeah. the best song you've ever yeah. heard. So. I sing the monsters, I'll stand there so brave and chase them all. You touched on it a little bit earlier. Um, since you are a duo, there's not a whole lot of people involved. How, how do you sort of approach the business side of of, the, of what you guys do? Is it a four letter word, or is it something you kind of you roll up your sleeves and just hop into? So thankfully, um, we have an amazing team of people behind us that are all of our, for the most part, all of our best friends from college. Really asked uh, that question. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, don't get me wrong. Cal and I are really heavily involved, and I think you know we have a lot of meetings, and we'll you know, say like, this week we need to sit down and talk about what's going on, and we're, you know, definitely very into that. But I also would trust those people with all the decisions and not make them myself if, you know, if it for came some reason to it, I yeah. had to, yeah. And I think that's um, what you want to, that's the number one goal everyone says when they start yeah. a business is create something where everyone you feel like can make a decision that you would be happy with. And, yeah. And these are all kids we lived with in college, and, you know, when we walk into the label or something, everyone knows, you know, they know our manager, Jared, or they know Luke, right. and they're like, they're, everyone's hungry. We're yeah. all, we're hungry to work and stay hard, stay working hard. Yeah. yeah. Do you take that attitude out on the road with you? So, I mean, you guys have been absolute road dogs over the last few years. You have played everywhere yeah. and anywhere. You've been to yeah, Asia, yeah, yeah. Jakarta. True I don't even know what, where yeah. that is. And, uh. <laughs> and so, how do you, do you, is that work for you? Is that a means to an end, or is it something you, you truly enjoy? So, touring is definitely. Uh, I think the more tiring aspect of our job. It's work. The in betweens work. Right. The stage, the stage is, is great. like yeah. 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 Once you're on stage, even if you know there are nights where we're super tired or super sick and having a hundred and three degree fever, and then you're out there you're like, I feel great. Like, yeah. Whoa. We love being home and making music, and I wish that we could be able to do both. That said, this tour we got our own rig, and we've been probably recording more music on this tour than we were off tour for the month before. So yeah. You know, it's it's you have to get in the zone. Is that a new thing for you guys to, to write in that in that way? We had a studio on our first tour bus, um, a studio I used loosely. It was a laptop like strapped down to the table. But also the hum uh, of the engine was in D. So yeah, every it wasn't very the, useful. The um, was in D. Very yeah. fun to use when after the show inebriated, but nothing no. really good came of it. No, 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 um, never see the light of day. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, now we have this like rack that will roll out and roll into hotel rooms or into the green rooms, and that's been incredible. Yeah, social media has been so key for you guys mm -hmm. that is that something that came organically or was that something you kind of at the beginning kind of had to force yourself to do and uh, better tweet better post something I will better. say I remember Rez forcing me to begging, get Twitter begging for begging me <laughs> I, just, I don't know I just don't see it yeah, I don't it's know. so stupid um, but, but I think the same thing happened with Vine for me so, yeah, yeah and, and I, I don't think it is something at all we had to uh, force because Given what Time Flies Tuesday is, which is, you know, an outlet from us writing our original music to do something creative, to connect with our fans, right. that is that is kind of what we are. Twitter, Instagram, Vine, doing all that stuff is like, that's easy for us. Connecting with fans is kind of what we built ourselves on, so it's not something we have to force at all. Well, you took it to the next level, too. Didn't yeah. you have fans tweet your phone number, and then you were calling people? We've done some, some well... Through Google Voice, nobody has our numbers, but... Um, <laughs> unless, you, unless you play your cards right. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, but uh, <laughs> <Don't call me. laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, we we've done that. We built our own iPhone app, which was a huge deal for us, and we're still you know really excited about um, and are innovating all the time. Um, we actually this tour did I think the coolest thing we've ever done. Yeah, people can go on to timefliesLive.com if they're at the show. Um, it's geolocated, so it's yeah. literally at the show. And submit topics for the freestyle, and they'll pop up on the board and cast a freestyle live during the show. Right. So that's been really awesome. That's one of the things that gets us going is doing something that no one else is doing. Right, and we're I both mean, really interested in the tech space, so it's right. you know, they kind of go hand in hand. So what's your take on sort of the prevalence of streaming? Is that really where you see the business going? So i got to say, I personally... I do respect the Taylor Swift move and you know I know what she's thinking and like you know I've read a lot of the business side articles and it, it's I understand I get, I get where she's I also don't think she's gonna win that fight so I think you know streaming is here to stay and and I support it well, she's also very much the exception too there's right. not a whole lot of artists that are in right. her position right. right that's true but it's also I think it comes down to the simple Piracy is zero dollars for people making right. art and streaming, although, you know, people can write their articles and say that it's, you know, it is not much money, but 
they are trying to give money to the artists. Right. They're trying to get people compensated for the work they're doing. And I think what Taylor did really is helpful for everyone. With, you know, there's only one Taylor Swift, but I think it's helpful for everyone because what she's saying is what she wants people to take away, which is this is art. We're making this right. not so you Pay can just artists better. Yeah, just right. a- appreciate that it's art and that you know it takes work and it takes time and it takes blood, sweat, and tears. So. You, you know that's something you should respect for her that results in two million albums and right. you know it might be <laughs> right. you know but but we yeah. also both use Spotify every day so I think it's awesome yeah <laughs> so knowing what you know now about the business and being on the road and sort of all it entails would would you do it all again absolutely yeah I think we've made pretty good decisions um, there's nothing really that I look back at and you know wish that we'd done better uh, business wise. <laughs> Uh, right. A few times last Tuesdays. Yeah. 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 A couple, Maybe a couple less of those. A couple, yeah. mul- a couple <laughs> mulligans here and there. Do that basketball it could be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, no. It's been it's been a good ride. And again, we have people behind us that are you know giving us great opinions, and it's been helpful. And for us, we feel like you know it's been a hell of a journey. But for us, we feel like this is only the starting point. Right. I mean, with everything we're doing, we're yeah. we're doing. It. Awesome. Last question. Do you guys have a secret handshake? We do. Two part question. We do. Uh, yeah. Can you show me the handshake? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to learn it? Kind of. Right, well, well, you you guys first, and then I'll see if I can do it. All right. All right. It's pretty easy. So it's, so it's front, back, the up down. forearm slap. Yeah, all right. Uh, forearm, I can't do it. What chance do I have? The forearm shiver. No, I was no, trying to describe easy. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you go. go you got go. it? One more time. Yeah, Let's right. go. Front, back, forearm shivers, up, down, and back. <laughs> all right. I don't know about this forearm shiver. All right, ready? Yeah, you got it? Yep. Yeah. Front, back. Warren Schubert. Yeah. Oh, like a natural. <laughs> Look at that. Better than our merch guy, to be honest. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So I'm the new third member <laughs> yeah. of Time yeah. Flies. You got it. We'll exactly. talk about the compensation yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, thank you guys very much for taking the time to chat with us. Sure. You at home, head over to timeflysmusic.com. Pick up After Hours. And uh, back to you. <laughs>